and we're live. Welcome back, guys, to another episode of the Solvable Mysteries podcast. My name is Juras, and as every week, I'm joined by my co-host, Glenn Highcove, who's joining me all the way from California. Man, how are you feeling this Friday evening? Yeah, I'm doing okay. It's getting cold. Uh, we're just about to head into the holiday season here, and, you know, it certainly is darker. Darker every day. Always weird stuff going on. Um, you know, I, you and I were talking a little bit before, uh, even just before we get into the case, you know, I, I, I browse a lot of Reddit, both, both you and I browse a lot of Reddit, uh, subreddits, but there was this one video that was kind of interesting from like, a, I guess a true crime perspective, because it was like a really violent, um, let's say mobbing, uh, like, like gang encounter where three people ended up getting rubbed out at the end of it. But it was like, just interesting to think that like, wow, you never really hear about stuff like that, even though that's, you know, like that's part of the United States. Oh yeah. Um, that's officially. Rico, right? that's... Yeah. Yeah. So it's over, you know, it's kind of apart from a lot of the rest of the, you know, United States, but it is the United States territory and, you know, governed by our laws. And it's it's a crazy thing. I mean, this is a, a, a this is this is this is as violent as anything you would see in a war. I would I'd say it was probably more violent than stuff in the war zone because it was just gratuitous. Yeah. Um, you know, pe- people maybe that that watch this kind of content, they'll know what I'm talking about. It's just like a very over the top, um, like first a, a drive by shooting, then a gun battle, then like a, basically a rubbing out, an elimination or execution of uh the guys who were already basically incapacitated uh yeah it was it was crazy so it's just it's interesting to think about that and you know i think we've talked about this a little bit but sometimes it's it's interesting to think of look at there's a lot of um open source data now that's available from cities and counties and states etc that wasn't available in the past so you know at least there's a lot of resources to educate oneself okay that was my little diversion for today (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah because we're not we're not actually going to be talking about that right we're going to be talking about the but that's interesting that you mentioned that i I didn't see see this it's probably like a big uh, a big thing on reddit but today uh we're actually going back to dior kuhn's case uh, the case that i briefly talked about on our last episode um i wanted to do a bigger or like like, let's say a uh uh a deeper dive into the disappearance of the two-year-old boy from Idaho uh, who went missing in 2015 and I just want to jump into the case right off the bat you know what I mean I want to really get uh, right into it so uh, for those who are not familiar with our last episode uh, the brief overview of the Dior Kuhn's disappearance case is basically in 2015 in the month of July a two-year-old boy from Idaho Falls went missing while he was on a camping trip Um, he was on a camping trip with his parents who were not married but were engaged at that point that would be Vernal Kuhn's uh, Dior's father as well as Jessica Uh, Jessica who's the mother of Dior as well Jessica's last name is Michelle because she hasn't really yet married Vernal Um, also on the trip there was um, Jessica's grandfather Bob Walton, as well as the oddball of the crew, which was the 40 year, 40 years of, of age younger than the grandfather, but he was apparently the grandfather's friend, Isaac. Uh, Isaac Rainwand. So, um, I did think that their relationship was kind of weird the last time I've talked about this case, but now digging a little bit deeper, looking at the web sleuth forum a little bit, digging more on Reddit, uh, looking at some more interviews, I think I have like a better gauge on the whole situation. Um, I have a pretty nice structure uh, of how I want to uh, conduct this podcast today, uh, mainly following an amazing absolutely amazing write-up on this case from reddit written by quirky motor he did 
like an amazing write-up on this case so for everyone who wants to find out more information definitely go check out his reddit post that's like a very detailed that's like a wikipedia page that this case never got you know there's not a wikipedia page on the dior coon's disappearance and this reddit post from quirky motor i think we leave this in the in the description as well as like even better than any wikipedia like could like could do you know what i mean so dude before we jump into the nitty-gritty side of things you know your initial thoughts on the case and without you know without being too extensive of course yeah yeah no I, this is a case i had run into in the past and then i you know i i think i saw the dr grande thing a couple times now and it's interesting because it, it seems to be one that has a lot of different questions, but it also reminds me of, um, you know, some of the stuff that we've covered here, especially one particular case. And I'll, I'll kind of sit on that until we get to the end. All right. That's excellent. All right. So um, firstly, I want to introduce all of the characters in this case this week. So uh, starting off with Dior Kuhn's Jr. He was a two year old who disappeared on somewhere in between July 9th and July 10th. Um, so on the ma on the I mean, on the on our YouTube channel, I really want to uh, quickly show some pictures of Dior. So Dior was a two-year-old child, as you can see from these images. He was um, apparently a little bit smaller for his age, but he was a very active kid, always moving around, kind of seemed restless, at least from what we can tell from the testimony of the family members, right? So yeah, you... Mm -hmm. Just I, I have one question about that picture you have right there. I don't know if you're able to magnify in what are the does he have marks in his face i think those are wait let me check another images yeah if you can see these images well, on his there nose looks like he has like moles or something or, or something like that I birthmarks that, yes but then in the next picture there's something under his nostrils is that just yeah. you know is it just lighting am i just looking at it weird is, is like maybe do you like see what some, i'm saying some food be, food some kind of crap yeah, yeah. maybe some, some, yeah. something like that perhaps <laughs> it's not i've heard of for kids yeah yeah especially for someone like uh little dior who was apparently very active very uh tried to explore everything you know what i mean um then i would like to uh talk a little bit about um his father vernal dior coons senior so a lot of people also refer to him as dior senior but we could just refer to him as vernal for now just so that the audience member yeah and one more, just one quick thing. That picture, does that look like a uh, defensive body language to you? Um, kind of like crossed arms in front of you? Not really sure. Kinda yeah. Well, it, it depends on the context, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. As well. Yeah, that's that's a good point, man. So basically, he's the biological father uh, of the Orcunes. Um, there is some speculation that he might not be the father, but then again, I don't really know why like if there are any speculations like that then just go and do the dna test because the speculation is coming i think not even from like the internet sleuth or anything like that i think like speculation is coming from like actual like authorities and stuff like that so i mean what's the problem there just go do the dna test as i've said he is the fiance and well the former fiance and uh former boyfriend of jessica mitchell because they split up after dior's disappearance um he claims essentially that he was camping with his son when his son disappeared on july 10th 2015 he also says that he 100 percent trusts his fiance jessica okay and says that jessica didn't do anything bad to dior and he also believes that dior was most likely abducted from the campsite uh he also says that he left dior with his with um his great grandfather for around 15 to 20 minutes and in that time frame he disappeared law enforcement as well as private investigator philip klein that was um hired by the family and later on turned against the family stating that the family is not being truthful both law enforcement and the private investigators believe that vernal is lying 
and that he is not being truthful completely. And now this moves us to Jessica Mitchell. Now I know this picture is not like the best picture in the world. It definitely looks like an innocent, like like a not so innocent person right here. But I mean, this is just the like the picture that I grabbed. So um, she also doesn't show a lot of emotions when she talks, when she's being interviewed by m multiple news outlets, etc., etc. She never really seems to overtly cry or anything like that. And also another interesting fact that when this particular interview happened in this from this image um the parents basically jessica as well as um vernal they were kind of giving their take three days after the disappearance of their kid and it seemed like vernal was really trying to talk over jessica so that jessica wouldn't be able to talk so much and i I think I got a certain suspicion that maybe Jessica and Vernal, they know m more about the case, but Jessica is just not, um, let's say, um, she's not equipped with excellent speech skills and she might slip up. So I think that's what may have been happening there. Anyways, uh, Jessica, as I've said, is the biological mother. Um, she claims that she was camping with her son when her son disappeared. She also says that she left him with her grandfather for around five minutes. So right now we have one uh, complete like uh, lack of, I don't know, and he's uh, like, uh, now we have some choppiness and some shakiness because the father, Vernal, says he left the kid with the grandfather, great grandfather, for 15 to 20 minutes. Mother says it was five minutes. All right. Um, mother also says that she trusts her former boyfriend, Vernal, completely. And she also believes that um, Dior most likely wandered away and passed away in the mountains near the campsite. Law enforcement as well as private investigators also believe that Jessica is not being truthful and that she is most likely lying. And I only have uh, a few more characters and I'll be done soon and I'll let you uh, uh, give your take on everything, dude. Now on the image, we see grandfather, great grandfather of Dior, Bob Walton. All right, so this is Jessica Mitchell's grandfather. He was well, he wasn't super old. I mean, he was 76. I guess that's old, but I think he was like in a worse shape than most 76 year olds. He was carrying oxygen with him. He had those little tubes stuck inside of his nostrils. He was apparently confused as well. Now, Jessica and Vernal claim that the camping trip was actually Bob's idea because Bob was apparently very keen on going back to the fishing spots that he used to fish at when he was just a little kid or something like that. Now, uh, Bob refuses to comment. Well, he's dead now, but when he was alive, he refused to speculate on Dior's disappearance. In fact, he actually laughed when he was asked about the case on some occasions. I mean, maybe he's just senile and confused, or maybe, I don't know, he's like sinister or something like that. I would likely um, probably think that he's maybe just senile. He also claims he doesn't trust Isaac, okay, and now, uh, and now we jump to Isaac. Isaac is this dude right here, the last member of the camping trip, Isaac Rainwand. Okay, so he apparently has some sort of slight developmental disabilities that are not completely documented, so we cannot verify this. Um, he was grandfather's Bob Walton's former neighbor and fishing buddy. Their friendship was very interesting to me because let's remember that at the time when Dior disappeared, Isaac was 36 while Bob was 76. So the age difference between them is 40 years. And I was like, how the hell did these two individuals even became I guess close friends or something like that but apparently back a few years before Dior disappeared when uh, when Isaac was Bob's neighbor he would actually do some home uh, work around the house for uh, for 
Bob because Bob was old and eventually they became became kind of buddies and became like fishing partners so I guess that kind of makes sense now some interesting points about Isaac is that he is the only camper that weekend okay who law enforcement says hasn't changed his story all of the other members of this camping trip have changed their story Isaac is the only one who consistently said the same uh, things over and over again. Law enforcement also asked him not to release any additional information to the press. Okay, Isaac believes that Dior wandered away and passed away someplace near the campsite. And the last two individuals that I want to bring into this case before I finish off this little uh, section talking about the characters... The first person would be private investigator Frank Wilt. Okay, so this guy is apparently was hired by the family. He was also some, somehow connected to the family, was like a relative or something like that. I couldn't really verify that. Now, he's apparently credible. He is a retired U.S. Marshal. He does not believe that the family is telling the truth. He thinks that it is possible the family gave away or potentially even sold Dior during this campaign trip he resigned from the investigation citing his mistrust of the parents story and then the second investigator that was hired by the family is Philip Klein this dude right here um, he was also later fired by the family he conducted hours of video interviews with the family and actually even posted them on his YouTube channel. He believes the family killed Dior, either intentionally or neglectfully, and is not telling the truth. Klain also makes a variety of accusations against the family to the media and some digging into his background revealed that he is actually not someone who has the best reputation in the world so he's a bit of a scumbag but then again the parents kind of look like scumbags here as well so can't really blame the guy too much and this is the roundup of the characters of this case dude so uh your reactions any any anything you want to uh, mention about like the, the group of people involved in this case i mean this i hope this is like now less confusing to people yeah, no, especially I think you answered one of the questions I had last time, which was what was the deal with how, how did those, how did two people with such a big age difference know each other? And then when you said fishing, well, I'm like, oh, that makes sense because they could have met each other at some kind of local fishing spot, you know, and that's it just, it just makes sense for a hobby like that it could span age groups. Mm -hmm. So that was my first thought about that. My other thought was, you know, I, you know, I never even thought about that um like kind of illegal adoption scenario which is definitely a lot better than some of the other scenarios so that's hopeful um i was kind of curious to see if there was any signs of neglect on him you know that's why i was looking at those pictures and asking what was going on with his face oh i see yeah yeah just to see if he had any kind of signs and then my other curiosity about him, though, I mean, it, clear, it seems like he was healthy. I mean, was there any indication that he had been unhealthy or had any kind of major medical, you know, expensive medical conditions at some point? No, not really. I didn't really see that. The only thing I want to uh, also add to what you're seeing right now, because uh, it kind of will line up here as well, is the fact that his biological mother, Jessica Mitchell, she actually has more kids uh, older kids than Dior from her other ex-husband and apparently since she has a hard time keeping herself employed she was unemployed then and she kind of partially gave away custody of her other kids okay so she has done that before so from that i'm just get, well she was still part of their life she would go and meet them and visit them and hang out with them etc etc so she didn't abandon her other children but she has a history of like let's say giving away like some sort of custody of her of her um children like not taking her not taking care of her children really is that sort of i mean are we kind of 
Yeah, she will. She is just sort of, uh, of a nice way of saying, you know, what I mean, not not really providing for her children yes, like a exactly. mother normally would. Exactly. That's yeah. interesting, right? So that's that seems like a big warning flag. I mean, a couple of things, right? First of all, that. Do you remember? The, I, I went on some long rant. <laughs> I think last episode about how you look at somebody's face. And, and and for sure, you know, like like because uh, I, I can for sure I can see the comments, and they would be right to write this that you can't just judge a book by its cover, and you know, like for sure, like I, I can remember people that were not necessarily attractive, or you know, even even like 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 you wouldn't even give them credit for anything, and some of them have turned out to be some of the best people I've ever like, like like professors and things like that that I didn't even know was a person I didn't even know was a professor and he was the best professor ever at UCLA. Um, anyway, when you look at her, what do you get from that face? I mean, does that look like a, look like a, I mean, you yeah, know, to, to your point, it's just a snapshot in time, right? You can catch anybody in a bad moment. I don't know. I mean, do we, do we have other pictures of her where she's uh, not looking, looking stone faced? I'll try to, yeah, I'll have some more images, you know, from this particular image that we're looking at. I'm definitely getting the Ka Casey Anthony vibes here, but then again, this is just one picture, dude. This is just one picture. Um, yeah. Dude, so I'll, I'll give. I'll, okay, I'll uh, give. I have another one, uh, dude. Let me bring this I, in. Yeah, I'm really curious because I'll, I'll give Casey Anthony. It's no the same problem, dude. I mean, she's not. She never she's is. Not, she's not stupid. Oh, by the way, uh, the other thing was that theory about. Um, okay, another one. I have another one. Yeah, what's 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 the the dad's name again? Uh, Vernal. Vernal. Um, Vernal definitely looks like Dior to me, like his eye shape, the way yeah. the eyes go out. That I mean, I don't know. I'm kind of. I mean, everybody looks a little, a little interesting. And this, <laughs> that's the friend, by the way. Poor guy. I mean, you know, like I'm sure someone would look at my photo and laugh at me. Yeah, I mean, this poor guy. I, I'm no, I, I, I really don't mean to. You know, he could have been caught in a bad moment, right? Just like any of us. Um, but <laughs> it, it, it's interesting that here's. Oh, okay, wait, wait. So just even before we get to the theory that, like, it was interesting. He was the most consistent person. Yeah. out of everyone in terms of questioning now the grandfather great or great grandfather really um do you think that it's possible that, that later on when he starts kind of let's say quote unquote seniling it up you know what i mean like oh that guy wasn't my friend i don't know what you're talking about and then like yeah acting weird and inappropriate do you think he's do you think that could be a ruse do you think that could be a ruse to like uh to, to make it like, oh, you don't need to question me. I don't know anything. I'm just the scarecrow over here. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. There's been speculation. There's been speculation that this was actually the case and uh, some something along the lines, well, he said something along the lines that the only reason why he's my friend is because when you get to my age, you want to have someone around just in case if you kneel down. That's his quote. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. This guy was kind of waiting out the game clock, right? So <laughs> as long as, as long as the ref didn't come at him too aggressively, um, he could just wait out the game. <laughs> he wouldn't yeah. have to, you know, I mean, because he has to answer to someone else maybe, but, um, yeah. So I don't know. That's, that's interesting to me. This seems like, I, here's, here's my main thing is mm -hmm. what they're all doing together seems like an awfully social activity for like, not even just like people if they were all related, but people that are kind of like just barely related or like not related at all, like this Isaac guy, which I get it, maybe he's just there to fish and they thought that would be fun, but like, where's, is there even a stream where they went camping? Is there a body of water? Of course, yeah, it's the, okay. uh, there's a massive, uh, uh, there's a big, the big, so, so that's, that's always a good, that's, by the way, that's the other thing that everybody always clues in on. It's interesting, I thought that was interesting in this case was, Unlike some of the other cases we've covered where like either um, the person wasn't really taken seriously as being missing right away or like they're not even really sure, really sure what happened to the person like like Brian Schaefer. Like right away they, they looked at the body of water and they're like, oh yeah, 
let's look there you know the, and they and they and they gravitate right towards it i guess it's a pretty decent i mean that, certainly any any body of water is enough to drown a small child um who can't swim and i don't know that that kid is old enough to be able to swim unless he'd had a lot of um practice doing that uh, in a more comforting fire, family environment do we know much about the dad like what's his deal like what's it's uh not necessarily uh the, like uh, we don't have a lot of background of the father um i really wanted to then again uh, quickly uh talk a little bit about what you just said about the body of water now as i'm sure you're familiar the body of water has been like searched by diver teams extensively like super extensively apparently with like helicopters flying over the whole entire area with like special like um detectors etc etc and they couldn't really locate anything so um uh apparently the whole body of water theory that he was just drowned somewhere in the body of water is uh, not possible unless he drowned by accident and then the parents took his body and uh, hid the body somewhere uh but it but his body did not remain in any of the body of waters and to answer your question about vernal uh we don't really have that much uh information on his background uh, apparently was a truck driver apparently um from what i'm seeing what from what i've seen his interviews he was selling it really well if he is completely innocent then he was selling it well in my opinion because he did seem genuinely distraught and very sad about the situation the mother on the other hand looked kind of interesting she seemed kind of emotionally detached in her interviews but maybe that's her personality who knows but um at least the father definitely looked like he's like this has affected him you know what i mean yeah i mean it's it's interesting to me like what i i guess there's, there's, it seems like there's a pattern in in jessica's life so i can't imagine i can't imagine that like she's above suspicion necessarily given what happened to early children now it's interesting that people allege that maybe there was some kind of murder so this is like there's sort of a, a casey anthony scenario that goes well alleged right alleged because casey anthony well, like was me. found it you know yeah. not guilty um so you know quote unquote but it's interesting that like i'll say the one difference is that casey anthony seemed like it was somebody i mean who admittedly i mean like i mean we, when we covered it this is one of our earlier shows now when we covered it it became pretty obvious that like she was just like a total sociopath liar um irresponsible person but actually actually trying to make other people happy you know what i mean a lot of smiling and fake smiles and maybe mm -hmm. you know maybe a selfish person for sure but this person just seems very unfriendly it seems like a very hostile affect i don't know maybe she's already had a hard life so maybe that's just part of just the reality right of being what she's been through but i don't know i'm not i'm not comforted by this this face compared to maybe some of the other people we've seen yeah. Well, it's I don't know. Yeah. It's just a, it's just dude. It's just one screenshot. Um, yeah, she, sure. she, she, but she does. But you know, to give you credit, she doesn't really look that much better anywhere else. You know what I mean? Um, now let's uh, talk a little bit about the background of this case because we still have like a lot, dude, to go through and a lot of like back and forth to have. So um, we definitely need to get going here, man. Um, so the background was uh, such that the Orkuns Junior. Uh, you know, a little bit of, of, about the, yours background, just in general, maybe it will answer some of your earlier questions, right? So, Dior Coons Jr., he was actually born on December 13th, all right? So, almost on the New, Year, New Year's night of 2012 to his mother, Jessica Mitchell, and, you know, the father, Vernal. Um, you know, uh, yeah, so some more shakiness here. 
in my notes a little bit okay so um neither jessica nor vernal have criminal records that's something you know i wanted to add uh jessica does however have two children from a previous marriage that are still in the custody of her ex-husband now i've talked a little bit about this earlier um according to jessica family jessica's family uh, the custody arrangement was made so that the older children could have a more financially stable life because apparently the mother, Jessica, she has a very hard time um, keeping down a job, keeping herself employed. And in fact, man, one of the... Well, it's really hard to distinguish what was the reason to go on this trip for the family members, but it seems like it was triggered by some sort of a milestone. So it was either the grandfather, you know, great grandfather really badly wanting to go to that fishing trip, even if he's on oxygen and he's so confused. And I don't think he was in the physical shape to even actually go fishing at that point but okay i'll give him credit maybe he just wanted to see the, the scenery whatever that's kind of understandable but the other uh the other potential milestone that culminated in this trip on july 9th 2015 to go camping all of a sudden by the way at around like 6 p.m in the evening um driving around three hours at 6 p.m in the evening to go camping okay that's where he that's an interesting well okay i don't want to get into that either but one of the potential milestones that could have culminated in this was the fact that apparently it, they were celebrating the fact that jessica okay had managed to hold down a job for six months and you know what that job was that job was actually caring for her grandfather bob walton because apparently she was also getting maybe like paid for that so you know that i guess just is a you know testament to her not potentially being the best workforce contributor in the united states you know it's interesting it's like she's like uh so maybe this is maybe that's like the hidden part of this because it's just embarrassing like uh, it, by the way the parents aren't involved so just make sure people hear me clearly if the parents are not involved with the disappearance then they're sort of doubly or triply victimized by this right because then it's not just that they lost a child but then you know people like you and me and everybody are are scrutinizing them and judging them and you know giving the you know they just they just wanted to be a nobody and now because something horrible happened you yeah. know they're getting they've become youtube fodder but it, it does seem like she's um somebody who's who's like disadvantaged in some way yeah. right like maybe 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 by multiple factors mm -hmm. but maybe that's that's why to be so to be fair maybe she's just she might be somebody that actually has like mental challenges or cognitive challenges or or even just other other things that affect behavior. Yeah, you know, it doesn't. Someone could be in, intensely intelligent, but if they can't um, control their behavior, they're not necessarily going to be good good employment. Yeah. Real, right? No, that's in, that's in, in public service. Yeah, that's completely understandable, man. Uh, but then again, the family members did change their stories on multiple times, and they do not have, at least the parents, they do not have diagnosed mental handicaps. So the changing of the stories is kind of suspicious. So a lot of people do have some animosity towards uh, Jessica in particular because she is kind of suspected. Uh, I mainly even the most to know more about this um but we'll get into it dude um now really quickly about the back background of the trip because we have to talk a little bit about this so according to dior's father vernal the family had decided to go on a camping trip on thursday july 9th after vernal got off from work at around 5 p.m now sometime in the evening around 6 p.m the family piled in into their truck picked up grand grandpa bob walton and apparently they were driving in two vehicles so this was a very um let's say shaky area of the timeline for me because apparently um 
uh, Vernal, Jessica, and Dior were driving in Vernal's black truck driven by Vernal himself, and the following them was a SUV vehicle that belonged to Bob, apparently also driven by the same Bob who can't remember anything and has like oxygen tubes in his nostrils, and he was sitting in that SUV vehicle with his friend Isaac, as well as the vehicle, the SUV vehicle was dragging a camper as well. So apparently that's the setup. It's a very weird setup, but nonetheless, um, uh, they drove uh, for around 116 miles just to get to the town, the little town of Lador. So, dude, if you would check quickly on the map, and everyone, you know, I'm just gonna show this map. I always say it's good to show to check this map on the on the YouTube channel. I don't want to do that anymore because I know a lot of people just cannot really go there. Uh, they're listening to this while at work or something like that. So, I'm just gonna say we're looking at a city called Idaho Falls on the map right now, and it's a pretty big, like at least definitely a lot larger city in compared in comparison to Lador, now, or Liador, I'm sorry. So Liador is this small town uh, very close to the campground. It's It only has an occupation, of, like a, a population of 80 inhabitants. So it's a very small town, and this is actually a crucial detail. I think we'll still cover it a little bit. So it took them 116 miles just to drive from Idaho Falls to Leador, which is around from just around, let's say, uh, an a two hours, maybe two hours and 30 minutes uh, drive. And then from Leador, they still had to drive 10 miles uh, on very rugged terrain that is actually only uh, passable during the summer month uh, during winter time it's actually it's imp it's impossible to pass and still you have to have like a pretty good um, truck or SUV uh, I know personally that my own vehicle that I, dr I drive probably wouldn't even make this trip right here so they had to drive for another hour um, uh, on a dirt road to get the Timber Creek campground and now continuing on in the timeline I want to quickly see where it was all right so yeah um, the family said that they pulled into the campground at around quote dark so they don't really have an exact time but we can say for certain that sunset in Leodore on July 9th 2015 was actually 9 20 p.m so many sources uh you know news sources articles etc etc they all put the timeline of the family arriving at the camp at campground at around 9 30 PM. So without with stopping here, and you know, I'm just gonna sip some water, dude. Uh, anything that jumps out as particularly interesting or or strange uh, of of this whole arrangement to even go on this camping trip. I mean, the grandfather was he driving a vehicle? If he has tubes in his nostrils, can he even drive the vehicle? And then again, um like the the crazy random drive like and this was like a this was not a friday this was not a weekend i believe this was thursday okay so i don't know like a lot of suspicious uh suspicious little points here uh in my opinion yeah it just seems like a lot of effort to get way far away and somewhere remote where you could try to pretend to do something maybe because I, i'll tell you like the amount of uh, uh, the how like far this is from everything and the fact that it's it's kind of, it seems like a pretty remote area and not that developed i was wondering can you zoom in a lot closer to that um campsite i'm just really curious uh, dude i actually have a is that video it? i have a video of the campsite. oh perfect yeah 
I can play the video as you talk. So this is just a quick uh, background, uh, you know, for you to understand. Someone just taped apparently the place. This is what we're seeing is apparently where they were camped out. One other thing I want to mention, no other campers were present. Okay, it was only them. They were camping around this particular, uh, you know, wooden table that we can see. Uh. And now this dude is going to walk with his camera towards the creek. But this is the general facility right so you could like give your thoughts here man i mean is there is there any kind of it's interesting it, it, okay on one hand it just seems like if there's no facilities and by facilities i mean like water bathrooms things like that like a public campground might have for a car camping trip i mean this looks so remote this looks more remote than most of my Boy Scout trips uh, in terms of like not having other facilities nearby. Dude, I'm so sorry to yeah. to step in. Apparently, I think there was like a porta potty somewhere down okay. somewhere. Well, but uh, yeah. but pretty bad. I want to say one thing. There is no rangers. Okay, no ranger station. They were literally alone. And also, there are presents. There is a present of wolves, okay? Wolves are present in the local surrounding areas. That's interesting. I know the wolf attack on humans doesn't happen too much in North America, though with the infant, you know, just like the dingoes, right? In Australia, seemingly anything is possible with wild animals that are, that are just key to take advantage of any kind of weak animal. Um, so maybe that's what speaks a little bit in favor of the, the wandering off theory. It's just interesting. You would think, though, that they would find some sort of remains. I don't think wolves can eat like an entire human head, let's say, and then the teeth and things like that. There's there's things that about humans that can make it, you know, like bone fragments and things that usually can be identified pretty easily. Oh, yeah. The the law enforcement, they don't believe uh, it, this is even a case because one other detail about uh, Little Dior is that he was wearing oversized cowboy boots at the time of his disappearance. Okay, and he was quoted as constantly falling out of them. So he couldn't really walk in the, into them properly. It was just something cute, I think, that he did. So if the animals snatched him up, then... Uh, surely there would be screams, blood traces, as well as clothing pieces, especially those boots somewhere, okay? Because there, the, it was massively searched, hundreds of volunteers. Someone would have seen the boots. You know what it looks like more to me? It almost looks like a no hookups kind of place for like RV camping, because it's all flat. You know what I mean? It's been graded. Or something or it's been turned into something that you can probably semi-reliably put a decent sized vehicle across without hopefully bogging down in mud except for during real bad weather mm -hmm. but just the lack of facilities and everything it boggles me dude because like i said i i was you know i, I know i've said it a bunch of times i did a, an episode on it and like let's suppose you look at it from the jared negrete episode point of view where you're like well you know in that episode i talked about two different people that were teenagers that wandered off and managed to wander so far away that one probably died and the other one almost died several times and it was only found because he was strong and you know survived for a couple of days alone and still was driven half mad with thirst and hunger but this little kid that can't barely walk in his little boots you're gonna bring him and an old man with oxygen where it's like, yeah, you know, it's a good point. It's funny when you talked about fishing. Yeah, that's right. Can he even lift his freaking arms? Yeah. Can he even cast a, a, I mean, I guess, you know, a, by the way, you don't have to, you know, like, I mean, the, the, the best fishing I ever did was with literally a bamboo, a bamboo pole with fishing line tied on it. And I caught more fish that day than I ever did any day since. Um, but so it doesn't have to be power fishing but this this is like some kind of rugged like i don't know uh camping stuff where like like even as a boy scout i wouldn't want to be somewhere where there wasn't like a toilet or something um or some sort of facility like i never had to do something like that well they had the camper uh they had the, the, okay they had they did it on an yeah RV. they have an rv they had the camper and apparently uh the old man uh bob walton was actually the one sleeping in the camper okay 
I don't know. It just maybe maybe it makes sense. Maybe you know what I mean. Yeah. Especially people are used to it, and especially if they have a camp. I mean, if you have a camper, it's a totally different story, because it then does make some place like this cool. Oh, you see that? You see it's that? like that. That's the party party. Uh, one second, dude. I think you see. You know what this? though? I mean, the the the, the Majestica, whatever. It's probably not going to want to use that though. That's disgusting. Yeah. I don't know. Those those things are like like just nasty. Oh, of um, course. <laughs> of course. Yeah. I mean, if they're not like real plumbing, oh my god. Yeah, they're they're terrible. So. I don't know. I mean, it, it's, I guess it's plausible. So that's where it's like, yeah, like, uh, then it, it goes back to once again, just judging it by the other circumstances, which I, I think you have, you have some more stuff though. Teed of up course, for of course. Yeah. We have a bunch of stuff, dude. Um, now I want to talk a little bit about the whole drive, uh, because along the way to this, uh, campground on July 9th, on the first day when they, uh, you know, set out on this trip, the family claims that they have actually stopped for a diesel at the uh, Silver Dollar and the Silver Silver Dollar restaurant in Leodor, okay, in that little town, uh, only 80 uh, inhabitants. Uh, family also stopped at the convenience store to pick up some groceries. Uh, it is important to note that no one outside the family actually witnessed Dior at any of these places in the Leodor, okay? So there's like the family is there picking stuff up, like the group of people are buying, like going out. No one actually sees Dior with them, which is kind of suspicious. Um, now, also, no video cameras were also available at any of the stores or the places that, um, you know, the family had entered. So there is no CCTV to confirm that Dior was ever there. But I know I make it sound very suspicious. I do personally believe at this point that Dior was in fact at uh, Leodor. I think I'll still be able to talk about why I believe that is the case, but um, we we do not have concrete evidence that Dior was even on this camping trip. The only people that can say for certain are the people that took Dior with them on this trip. I do believe he was on the trip, uh, but we just cannot verify that, uh, unfortunately. Now, okay, so they arrive at uh, the campground at July 9th, uh, around like 9.30 p.m. in the evening, right? And they like, do some activities. We don't really have a lot of information on July 9th. Um, some people speculate that maybe Dior was all, there's a chance that Dior may have been accidentally killed, lost, or somehow the family members, uh, you know, accidentally killed him during the night of July 9th, okay, but we can't really say for certain as well. Now let's move to the July 10th. The morning of July 10th is a little bit choppy, we don't really have um, any timeline uh, before 10.30 a.m. in the evening, so apparently the family woke up around somewhere in between 10.30 and 11 a.m., okay, in the morning, I'm sorry. After the family had breakfast, Jessica started her period okay she had like the period situation and she asked her then boyfriend Vernal to uh, return to Leador to pick some supplies apparently she wanted to get some tampons uh, and the family well at that point uh, Jessica Vernal and Dior apparently left the campground to drive all the way back to Leador for some feminine hygiene products as well as to fill up the gas tank with some more diesel okay so that's yo th wait 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 sorry I, I, I gotta jump in even I, I hope I hope not inappropriately but look wait so that you know the feminine hygiene product stuff let's just say that that's going on and they're going back to a campsite where there's no bathroom for her to use in theory, or is she, is she ever getting to use the camper? Is, is, she, sure. is she dependent on using that freaking, you know, sh shack over a hole in the ground? Yeah. Like probably ancient, like none, it's not even a chemical toilet. I don't know, dude, with like, like no running water and stuff for like how many days were they going to be out there? Just a couple overnight or was it going to be? No clue. That, I don't know, dude. That, that, that to me, once again, sound, that sounds very forced. 
Yeah. You know what I mean, just to hear that angle. I mean, unless it's, don't get me wrong, something could surprise somebody. Yeah. But just, it seems like another a constellation of like mm -hmm. inconvenient stuff, like toddler plus old person on oxygen who's almost dead, mm -hmm. plus somebody maybe going through their um, kind of uh, monthly visitor, mm -hmm. you know, with no running water and no bathroom to use and no, you know what I mean? So something that's very bathroom intensive, just as part of nature for one of the, the sexes and um, just like the worst place to be. Oh, a yeah. place as far away from civilization as you can almost think of, except for this camper that this old man's staying in. I don't know. Yeah. No, that's, I, I completely agree, man. Now, what they did actually on this um, supply run to Leador is quite uncertain okay we don't really have the exact information uh, because uh, the timeline got choppy some people were claiming that well i think the father emphasized he was looking for diesel he was stopped at multiple different um locations until he finally got some diesel the the mother said that she went to like a supply run or to get like the tampons and then she uh, apparently uh, got some fries from a restaurant for little dior no one really remembers seeing dior um later on jessica the mother a few days after dior disappeared claims to have spoken to a worker of one of the convenience stores and uh but this is but this um this in encounter between jessica and the convenience store employee happened uh post fact uh after you know dior went missing and the employee told jessica that she saw on the same day when dior disappeared by the way dior later on disappears at 2 30 p.m in the evening uh, or in the afternoon i would say but this employee says that at 6 p.m i've seen a man with a uh, a, a dirty man with a little child who resembled Dior in our store and the child was crying and he was trying to buy him some candy okay so there's like a little bit of a then but but this is Jessica's statements I cannot verify that for a fact I do think there's a chance that police actually met uh, and found that dude apparently later on it was uh testified that um he was actually just with his son so uh, maybe this is just another uh, point where jessica is trying to like uh you know get as much heat of her back as possible we can't really say for certain at this point now uh i want to also talk a little bit about about when they return to the campsite okay from Leador because this is where things really get cracking this is where things are really weird so uh, apparently the family returned from Leador back to the campsite after they gathered their supplies around 1 p.m or 1 10 p.m but this is already a source of speculation that perhaps Dior never returned from the from Leador. There's and I think this is very. I I will actually even say quite likely that that Dior maybe left for Leador, or maybe his body left for Leador. Okay, uh, now uh as i've said the timeline gets shakier after the return from leador so they return at 1 p.m the adults decide to go fishing with isaac i'm gonna try to like describe the events as as understandable as possible so um okay so here we go uh now apparently isaac claims to see dior around the time between 1 10 p.m and 1 30 p.m at the campsite so isaac claims that when the family returned from leador dior is still alive and well according to vernal it was nearing dior's nap time at that point because dior usually naps around 2 p.m in the afternoon so about at 1 30 p.m 30 minutes before dior's nap time the adults which would include vernal jessica 
and Isaac minus Bob leave to go fishing and they leave Dior with his grand great grandfather Bob. Okay, there are several stories being told at this point, so it's kind of difficult for us to really note down what's happening, but in some interviews, the family says that Dior should have been napping at that point as they walked to go fishing. It is unclear why no one put Dior to bed before the fishing trek. According to Jessica, her grandfather said that Dior was playing in the dirt or playing with his shoes under a tree as the group of three went fishing and left Dior with his grandfather. Jessica herself says that Dior was under the tree eating candy in some other interviews. She also claims that little Dior said that he wanted to stay with his grandfather, great-grandfather and eat candy and did not want to go with the group of three to go fishing. Okay. Okay, let me see. Uh, this is an important point because Bob, the great-grandfather of Dior, says he does not remember being asked to watch Dior. He clarifies this by saying it could have happened and he either forgot or he just didn't hear Jessica asking him to watch over Dior. Now Bob, the grandfather, claims that Dior was alive and playing in the campsite as the group of three left to go fishing. Okay, now Isaac, Vernal, and Jessica left the area to go fish in that big body of water that we've talked about earlier to the creek to fish, okay? Sorry, I just had to take a breather. Jessica says she looked back at the camp as she was walking towards the creek to make sure that Dior wasn't following them. Once at the creek, Isaac and, you know, the couple, uh, Jessica and Vernal, they spread out over an area of about 150 feet with Isaac being upstream and the couple being farther downstream. So Isaac and the couple, they kind of uh, split up a little bit. I don't know why, but they just decided to do their own thing. So they weren't really necessarily paying attention to what, what each other was doing, right? So somewhere between 2 p.m. and 2.20 p.m., uh, the family goes back Okay, so this is around like, I don't know, like maybe 20 minutes, 15 minutes after they went to go fishing. The father, Vernal, he says, oh, there are some tadpoles. I would like to show these to my son, Dior, so I'll just go and get him. So apparently he walks back to the campsite at around 2 p.m.-ish, around that time. And he asks granddad bob where's dior i want to show him some more fishes and bob claims that he uh, thought that he, that dior was actually with them and apparently he was confused and didn't know what was happening and uh yeah so then officially dior is missing i'll get we'll get into what happened next but at this point did i did this was this confusing was this at least more understandable than last week and obviously your thoughts on the whole disappearing of of, of dior yeah well it's, i mean it, it does clarify things thank you it just is once again at odds with probably the parenting styles of a lot of people to be leaving your toddler behind with an old man who said that he made her friendship because he didn't want to keel over and not have somebody there to help him 
how does leaving him with the toddler while everyone else goes fishing achieve that? Yes. That's the, the first weird, that's, that's the weird part. Then leaving the toddler, the kind of weird missed handoff, I find very unconvincing. That, you know what I mean? They, they, a lot of mothers, hey, you know, it's again, it's like it probably depends on the mother. And, and certainly there's been a lot of people that have experienced kind of free range parenting but but at least even the free range parenting there was some good amount of like watching the toddlers at a certain age to make sure they don't do stupid stuff like run into the street you know what i mean and there's like a woods version of running into the street which is probably like running into the lake or running off the cliff or something yeah it's just it's weird to me dude it's weird to me the kids running around in like cowboy boots and like uh, the, the, these don't these don't seem like people that are really into hunting and fishing. Um, how long did their experience? Do we know anything about, by the way about the the sort of like family life of Vernal and, and Jessica? Like, uh, how long did they have a relationship before he was born? Like, how at this point in the story? How long has their relationship been going on? I don't know. I just know one thing that uh, soon after Dior went missing, they split up. And uh, within the same year, Jessica remarried. It was actually a big shock to her mother, Jessica's mother, who didn't even attend the ceremony. So Jessica is like looking like she's cold-blooded. But in terms of Jessica's and Vernal's uh, uh you know relationship i don't really have um, the information the only thing i know that jessica had an ex uh, ex-husband and had kids with him and now had kids with um vernal as well but i don't really know uh, much more about that you know it's definitely really baffles me man especially i guess that's the part maybe that's worth a deep dive sometime is to kind of go into personality style or, or mothering styles because it's sort of the the it's it's the it's the, the it's not the norm as a mother to not want to necessarily um, mother your child. I mean, of course, accepting people that give up their children children for adoption, maybe we should be including them. Yeah. It's interesting, like like to look at the sort of it's contrary to a lot of stuff that we talk about. But then again, that I guess that's the sort of dirty secret of things like infanticide and. Um, you know, some of these suspected or even confirmed um, cases of, of uh, you know, crimes against children is that a lot of this stuff always did go on as a form of population control. Um, I mean, when you have people that, when you have people that walk out in their families, I remember they think about that, like, especially before the internet, it was not that uncommon, mm -hmm. like literally the first half of like last century and before for men that just, you know, they get tired of their families or things aren't working out or, you know, whatever it is, just to bail on their family and go to like the next town over or a few towns down and start a whole new identity. Yeah, well, but probably, probably uh, little Dior didn't do that, you know? Well, then, then that, that brings in the, um, well, hold on though, because that was the, the other thing though, there was some kind of allegation that maybe instead of something, potentially permanent happening to him he was sold that maybe he was yeah he was sold but sold i mean what does that mean sold does that mean sold to somebody that they're not willing to wait through the process of adoption because there's there, maybe there's a lot of eyes on them maybe they have a, a, a background that has blemishes or you know even worse is that why they can't adopt a child normally so they're going to yeah. adopt a child, you know, I mean, it's, it's interesting, but it doesn't, that doesn't, that actually, especially given what we know about Jessica's past, it doesn't seem as, you know, I mean, uh, there's a lot of things about this case mm -hmm. that don't seem so ridiculous when you look at them, when you look at all the other factors we discussed so far. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, that's the, the dude. That's actually a really good point. The, a lot of things don't really add up. Um, now, you know, so I wanted to talk a little bit about still um, after they realized that Dior is missing. So this is around 2.20. Some weird, weird actions are being taken. So Jessica says 
they were fishing for only 5 minutes, but Vernal says they were fishing for uh, 15 to 20 minutes when they returned to the camp. Inconsistencies begin here, but they don't end here. Jessica and Vernal search the campsite and creek for around 20 minutes before calling 911. At 2.26 p.m., Jessica called 911. Uh, and was on the phone with the dispatch for about four minutes. And I want to play the audio of this dispatch. So for everyone who's listening to this, I'm just going to play the audio for everyone. And let's uh, see what we think about Jessica's 911 call. And local people, local news. This is the sixth night an Idaho Falls family is spending without their two-year-old son. Search and rescue team still working to find your Coons Jr. somewhere in the Salmon Chalice National Forest. Local News Ace Chelsea Brunsell joins us in the studio. Now, Chelsea, you reported this past Sunday that the search was suspended, but it maybe it's not really suspended, right? Well, Jay Carroll, that's absolutely right. The search was never actually stopped, but it was redirected. Today, crews were searching near and in the water at the Stone Creek Reservoir because it's the only place that search dogs are able to pick up a scent right now. Lemhi County Sheriff's Office released the 911 call of the mother reporting that he was missing. A phone call no parent ever wants to make. What's the address of your emergency? Um, I'm actually camping in Ledworth. Just outside of Red Horse. Uh huh. Um, my two year old son, um, we can't find him. You can hear Jessica Mitchell's voice trembling. How long has he been missing? About an hour. An hour? Yeah. The last place family says they saw Dior Kuntz Jr. was a campground 10 miles west of Red Horse after being put on hold. Jessica? Yeah. Okay. What is he wearing? He was wearing cowboy boots. A blue um, pair, like pajama pants, and a camel jacket. The dispatcher asks for a description of the toddler. How tall is he? Hello? I'm not exactly sure how. Excuse me. Hello? Are you there? Yeah. Is your husband calling too? Like all down where we were camping at, and we can't find him at all. Then dispatch gives the mother instructions. Okay, we need you to stay within cell service. We okay. got people going on on the way. Thank you. Now, the father told us today that he will not leave the site until his son is found. Now, if you want to listen to the rest of the 911 call, you can go to our website, localnews8.com. Live in the studio, I'm Chelsea Brenzel. All right. Yeah, so this is the 911 call that the mother said and uh, uh, called. And she apparently, okay, we can, we can gauge from the call that the cell service is actually choppy. And then at some point, the 911 dispatch woman, she said, is your husband calling as well? And in fact, Vernal was calling 911 as well. But this is where things get kind of strange for some people. I don't know. Uh, I'll try to explain what happens here. So, okay, so Jessica is at the campsite. She has bad cell, cell service, cell phone service, but she is still able to get a hold of 911. Vernal opens his phone, he sees one bar of cell service, one bar, and he doesn't even attempt to call 911. What he does is, I'm just gonna drive closer out of the wooded area for around half a mile, where I'll get more than one bar of cell service. So he doesn't even attempt to call and he drives for about, let's see here, I wanna read. So apparently he, uh, he drives for around a half a mile down the road to get cell service and places his own call to 911 at around 2.22 p.m. On the 911 call, Vernal says that Dior has been missing for about an hour Okay, according to this time, Isaac returns to the campsite and grand and Bob Walton, the grandpa, 
informs him that little Dior is missing. This is very crucial, okay? Because, um, like, Isaac uh, was separated from Vernal and Jessica at the creek. And he wasn't even aware for a little while that Dior is missing. So this is actually an ample amount of time, in my opinion, for parents to not necessarily hide the body or anything like that, but to cause some confusion, commotion. And I think there is a chance that somehow the parents, if they returned from Lador without the without Dior, then Dior, uh, without Dior, right? If they returned from Lador without Dior, they could have potentially uh, somehow maneuvered themselves to make it seem that Dior was actually with them. You know, Grandpa Bob, he's confused and senile. He doesn't really understand what's happening fully, so he thinks maybe he's maybe Dior's there. He doesn't know. He's just relaxing, sitting in, in his chair. Isaac is kind of doing his own thing at the other side of the creek, and he's kind of fishing, and he thinks that Dior is back in the campsite, but he isn't sure. Now, he did state that he believes to the best of his... Uh, knowledge that he thinks that Dior was actually in the campsite uh, after the family returned from Leodor. So he thinks he saw him. But I think there's a chance he may have not seen him. Maybe he got confused. He has some sort of a me slight mental handicap as well. So maybe there's a chance that Dior never really came back from Leodor. You know what I mean? Uh, so... Yeah, what happens then is uh, there's some more confusion. Uh, the mother in some interviews claimed that um, she called uh, 20 minutes after Dior disappeared, but then uh, it was actually pinpointed that she called around one hour after Dior disappeared. Some people think that's a little bit of a too long of a time frame uh, to call law enforcement. Now at around 3.45 to 4 p.m., uh, you know, uh, search and rescue rescue teams arrived at the campsite. Um, you know, around the same time, uh, ar around this time, after searchers had arrived, Jessica claims to have seen Isaac carrying a muddy shovel. Okay, this is a this is a this is a crazy story, and dude, I want your reaction to this. I'm I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but dude, listen to this. Okay, Jessica, as the search and rescue teams arrive to the scene, Jessica says she saw Isaac carrying a muddy shovel. She also claims that upon investigating that shovel, she saw a blonde hair. On the tip of the shovel because Dior was also blonde and she was reaching in to pick up the hair but the wind just blew it away and the hair was lost so what do you think of that that's crazy so I mean at what point did she start saying that did she start saying that late late and the whole investigation is like a, it's the latest and greatest. I'm not sure. No, probably, I'm not sure. I think this this was brought in pretty early on in the investigation, and apparently this shovel did exist. Um, and apparently the shovel was inspected by law enforcement. The hair, the blonde hair, was never located. It had one blonde hair, and then it vanished in the air. You know, she didn't manage to grab it. But it, I guess, presumably, I know from seeing some of the background material we've looked at, that this seems to be kind of waved away um, as maybe something that's kind of made up or a distraction by the like the sheriff involved, right? Um, the law enforcement involved. I'm not really sure. I think, you know, I don't know. Like, yeah, I didn't really look into, like, the shovel thing is still a gray area, but... To, uh, all I'm gonna say is I think it's like phony like the blonde hair like you want to grab it and it flies away and then you're the only one who sees 
Like there's a bunch of like the the research and rescue teams are already on the scene. You're the only one who sees, you know, Isaac creeping in the woods with a shovel. Like he was just around the corner burying the ore. You know what I mean? And then he left the the blonde here, and then he just left the shovel. And then uh, uh, she then says that that he went and wasn't even looking for the ore and just went drinking. But he says that he was looking for for uh, Dior. It's interesting too to think. I think that, as I understand it from that same background material, there was a cadaver dog that did get a hit on something around the body of water, but they could never really find anything specific. It just goes to show you, though, that that kind of tool is being if a dog is a tool, that the cadaver tool dog is a is cadaver dogs have been in the area so you would think if there was a buried corpse somewhere else it would be detected or even dug up by some of the animals and thus even more easily discovered yeah no yeah that's see that's uh, exactly where i'm going at next because um uh soon uh, the camp was actually crawling with volunteers who were looking for the boy and law enforcement was already beginning interviews of all four adults who were camping that weekend by july 12th okay two days after he disappeared over 200 people were at the campsite searching for dior on foot horseback atv and helicopter later drones and dogs were brought in to look for the little boy no trace of him has ever been found, no shoes, no scrap of clothing, or any of Dior's things. So the FBI and local authorities, to, just to conclude the aftermath, uh, the FBI and local authorities have worked together on this case for the last five years. Well, at this point, as I'm reading this, uh, they have worked for the, on this case for the last seven years. Many interviews... I mean, six years, I'm sorry. Uh, many interviews have been conducted with both parents, as well as Bob and Isaac. Uh, some of those interviews were, uh, like, they, they didn't really match up at all. Um, the only interviews that kind of matched up all the time were of Isaac. So some people found it pretty strange how, you know, the only credible person in this case is like the oddball who's not even related to Dior and the family members and Bob are, can't even like get their story together. They're always switching stuff. Uh, cadaver dogs and tracking dogs have been brought to the site of the disappearance at different times, but the dog's dog findings uh, were mostly dead ends and didn't really produce anything conclusive. Um, the, pri the family over the years had hired the two private investigators, both of whom quit uh, because of inconsistencies from the family stories. Uh, it was really suspicious how um, actually Frank Wilt, the way he quit from what I'm gathering is, okay, so the family... Um, like uh, Dior's parents were not wealthy, they were kind of poor from what I'm gathering. So at first, um, you know, the Crime Stopper organization or something like that, they like had a $10,000 reward for information about Dior's disappearance. And I think this would have came out of like the donations and just in general from like the uh, Crime Stoppers organization as a whole. And now this dude came, co comes in for free frank wilt to investigate this case even further and he says we need to raise the reward amount now the family members they do not have enough money to raise the amount but he said i'll put up some of my own personal money so he put up another ten thousand dollars and he said we can raise the reward money now to twenty thousand dollars and take this case national right and the family were like nope we don't want that and then he was like why wouldn't you want that and i think the whole premise was that you already sac you're already sacrificing your time we cannot take this additional money there's no way but then this guy was like that's so strange you know and i also think it's strange because your son is missing do you really t care about like being um so um you know 
like uh, not indebted to your own family members like your kid is missing wouldn't you like try to like do anything you can you know what what do you think man yeah that seems pretty weird that seems like another another flag yeah another red flag right and essentially this is the the wrap up you know we don't really know where the ore is we don't really know um anything over the years uh you know no one has been charged or anything like that the parents have been named suspects at some point um you know the parents uh by the former uh lemai county sheriff they were like uh you know pronounced as suspects there are a million other things like um one of the private investigators philip klein had apparently found the camo jacket in uh you know in i think jessica's apartment or something like that the same camo jacket that jessica stated that were, that dior was wearing at the time of his disappearance we have a bunch of these little things so i think before jumping into theories dude because this was like we still have like these little nuances little details but I really want to mainly jump to the theories to like flesh out what we actually think happened to the Coons. But before that, anything I missed, anything you want to add or your whole overview of what's happening before we jump into that, you know? No, I think we're good. All right. All right. So uh, I think just to start off, right, the theories, I think there are certain lines of theories that we could follow. Okay. The first theory would be that the Coons was abducted. Uh, this is the theory that I think the family members are saying, uh, you know, happened the most. And uh, immediately I want to start off with saying my pros and cons on the fact that maybe the Coons is potentially abducted. Um, the first, uh, I don't know, con I would say to this is that there wasn't any other campers at the site. The second uh, Khan would be that no one heard a scream or heard a car driving because let's remember this is a very remote dirt road only one one road so I think if someone like it's and and the area is so like desolate not desolate but like very remote I would say I think if someone was approaching with their own truck you would hear like gravel noises or like dirt road noises so I think you would probably hear someone approaching um also the period of time for a potential abduction is only apparently like 10 to 15 minutes around that so to get in and out in such an area in 10 to 5 minutes I mean we've seen the campsite it's pretty open you know what i mean like you would probably notice someone abducting the child unless they maybe go went through like some wooded route which i guess you could do that but still i mean that's a pretty hard uh, hard idea and then lastly i have oh yeah uh lastly i just wanted to reiterate the fact that no other campers or cars or anything like that have been seen at the scene as well so yeah a lot of cons i don't really have any pros for for this particular theory like uh, the pros would be that um i guess no blood was found um and no you know no um signs of struggle were found but other than that uh the police think it's very unlikely that um dior was kidnapped i think your thoughts man yeah i think you're right it, it's i mean i think they're right it, it, it just does not make sense to me lots of things i mean it's, compare this to um you know what's the other big case we have out of, out of portugal um mccann uh yeah uh madeline mccann of course madeline mccann there are a lot of like warning signs there's a lot of, there's a good chance there's a good i mean it seems like almost like that's probably what happened is that she was kidnapped because there was all this stuff going on where there was you know break-ins and other other craziness and weird people going around this place you see none of that and then to your point you know let's say suppose someone parked nearby and then infiltrated in through the woods and did something 
they still would have had, you know, I mean, it's not like there's a bunch of roads going there. There's only really one road going in and out of the area. Yes. So you have, you have, you know, what I mean, you have some some limited amount of people that you can kind of verify, and and, and you know, the law enforcement's opinion is that there's no other suspects. I guess. Seems oh yeah. To be what they're saying. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's exactly right. Which leads us leads us to the second theory that Dior was actually killed by an animal. So the sheriff office said that um, there is a high wolf population in the surrounding area and they were mainly concentrating around wolves. But they also believe this is a highly unlikely scenario because no, once again, um, no one heard Dior screaming. Uh, there isn't any signs uh, of blood or any sort of struggle, which an animal would surely leave. And uh, yeah, just in general, I also do not think an animal attack was responsible here because uh, the the entire area was scoured by you know a lot of volunteers etc so i personally don't think that dior's body is uh, in and around the campground and i think if an animal would have attacked uh, dior there would have been signs discovered you know so that's all i'm gonna add yeah i mean the only i guess the only devil's advocate i would kind of argument i make to that is of course if you look at our you know dingo took my baby case i mean that's that's exactly what they said right they're like look there's been an animal tore a kid apart you know there'd be evidence all over the place and then there wasn't and then the lady went to jail and then later they found a jacket like miles away and this is after they did all this searching right they did i mean they did this the same level search for somebody's baby and it didn't turn it up. That's the only thing that does make you wonder, like, would a wolf or something else, and presumably, like, once again, they're looking for tracks and stuff. Would a wolf drag a kid away somewhere? And then, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if wolves, I don't know that that's their thing. Dude. Versus killing something on the spot. Yeah. You had an amazing point. Like, I completely forgot about that case. Like, the dingo ate my baby case that we'd done way back you're actually right you know what i mean it's not like it's completely unheard of of uh parents not looking at their children for a few moments and them getting snatched up and actually then now that now you say it it kind of similarly too it's like remember everybody jumps on it because the lady's kind of weird right yes so just the same way where i was picking on jessica yeah for having kind of a weird affect and eh, you know not the ideal I mean, uh, the Lindy lady, Lindy Chamberlain, was that her name, Lindy Chamberlain? She didn't, she didn't have uh, as bad of a kind of a track record going on. But still, there was, it was kind of some more level of criticism. And yeah. Demonization of her in the press. So it's interesting to think. Maybe that's 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 the one thing that goes in, and one of the things that goes in their favor is yeah. it's, not, it's not impossible. Yeah. And now this leads us to the biggest, uh, biggest theory, the biggest, um, let's say, uh, mental challenge for everyone is the fact that someone from the group is somehow responsible uh, and some or, or either all or a variation of uh, people are covering up the disappearance so this is the one that we really need to unpack so uh, we i think if we're going to be talking about like who is responsible for the murder or accidental murder by negligence or whatever uh, of Dior, I think we need to start off at the very back of the, the timeline and just set a few points straight. What do we believe? Okay, because this theory has a life of its own. So the first thing that I would like to say is I personally believe that Dior was on the camping trip on the 9th and I can assure like or at least I feel strongly that he was on that he was even taken on the trip because I, the one thing the one testimony the one person's testimony that I will 
how should I, how should I put it? I will uh, take to explain my reasoning is Isaac Rainwald. He is unconnected to the family. He there was a sort of a kind of a battle background battle going on between him and uh, Jessica. Uh, one Jessica says that she doesn't trust Isaac and then Isaac says I'm not gonna comment on anything I don't know if she was responsible so there's like some back and forth so I think they are not on the same team okay Jessica and Isaac are not on the same team so one thing I know and feel strongly that Jessica and Isaac are not covering covering up a crime together it's either one party or the other party, okay? Uh, but they're not together. The crime, if there was a crime, it was not committed by Jessica and Isaac together. So what this means to me, that Isaac wouldn't lie because, she would, because he wouldn't have any motives to protect Jessica, so he wouldn't lie about seeing Dior going with them on the trip. Do you know what I'm trying to say here, man? Like, I think that that Isaac's testimony about Dior even being on the trip is correct. I don't think he would lie about that. So that's why I think, going back to the, to the timeline, I think Dior was on the trip. Does this make any sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Because Isaac's the only one without a, a dog in the fight. You know what I mean? Just use the expression. He's the only one that's not related to Dior. Yes. So he's the only one. I mean, other than I guess an accessory charge, potentially hanging over his head if he, had, you know, was part of any kind of conspiracy, um, to you know hide someone's yeah. death or body, etc. Yeah, it's that makes sense to me. Everybody else has a problematic <laughs> behavior and motives also also his isaac's story is the only story that didn't change over the years it stayed the same while everyone else flip-flopped okay so that's also another thing that we have to take into account that law enforcement as well as private investigators they all think that isaac is telling the truth so we haven't done the interviews, but they have, and they believe that Isaac is the only one telling the truth. So, okay, so going back, now moving, okay, forward. We have to stop at uh, the evening of July 9th, when the family arrived to the campsite. Do we believe that Dior is still at the campsite? Isaac says he saw dior even the following day so i will say just to clarify i think what we're gonna say is that isaac is still alive at the ninth and he goes to sleep still living and breathing do you agree with that wait isaac or, or oh dior 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 i'm sorry so many names so many names dior so do you agree that dior is still alive on the ninth sure yeah i guess so I guess, I guess, I, I mean, if you think he's there, if you think he's there, then yeah, he's still alive. Exactly. Yep. If you think we're there, yeah, exactly. Um, then, okay, let's move to the next day. Okay, the 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 thing here is that uh, Isaac, he doesn't have a dog in the fight. He tells correct stories that don't change, and he says, and he do doesn't remember anything suspicious about the July. 10th breakfast so i think on july 10th breakfast dior is still with a group of people eating breakfast and i also think that that may be the last time we can verify that dior is still alive if you know what i mean yeah at least uh, or in the custody of his parents exactly 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 um now the point where around um, 1 or like 12 p.m. the family decided to go on a trip to 
Liador for supplies. I think we don't really know if Dior is alive anymore. We don't really know if Dior was accidentally killed or anything like that. Were accidentally drowned. Uh, I don't know, smothered accidentally. Uh, somehow accidentally killed by the parents. Okay, we don't really know. Because I don't think anyone actually saw who left it in the truck. Uh, at this point, I think there's a high chance that maybe Dior is dead. His body is dead. And the family's supply run is actually just a drive to Leodor to stash the body. Now, they, they did take... I don't know, they did spend some time in Leodor. Leodor is a very small town. Um, just looking at this uh, Google Earth image of Leodor Man, do you think that, let's say, within an hour or so, like just around an hour, do you think there's... Because let's remember, no one remembers seeing Dior with the family here. So where would you say out of this general area the family would have stashed Dior's body, if they did so. You know, it's all alleged, but if they did have a dead body on their hands, do you see an opening to stash the body? No, because to me, it's like a mixture of, you know, public and private properties. And, you know, pretty often, you know, because these farmers, they know their fields because they're making money off of it, right? So if someone disturbs their, their planting, I mean, this has happened, uh, including Case in Point, one of the famous uh, gangland executions of uh, the, if you ever seen the movie Casino, um, Joe Pesci's character, he gets rubbed out at the end and he, he and his, his, his brother were actually buried in a cornfield uh, and it was discovered by the farmer. The farmer was like, hey, someone dug up my field and there's some dead guys. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I guess that, that to me, it, it, I mean, they're out of their element. They're going to go wander around and like in front of this tiny town, like you said, a tiny town with a lot of eyes. I mean, it's not, I mean, it's still pretty tiny. It's 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 minuscule. It's not quite as tiny as I imagined it, but it still looks like it's it'd be pretty hard to kind of drive off road and like, you know, dig a hole. <laughs> like, what are you doing over there digging a hole? Oh, nothing. Just, uh, you know, digging for worms. Don't, don't mind us. Um, yeah, that, that doesn't seem plausible to me. You know what does seem plausible to me, though? Or more plausible to me than burying him off-site would be to hand him off to somebody. So maybe that's why... Yeah, I do That's why, yeah. More plausible. I yeah. want to add some more context. There are receipts that prove the family did go to multiple convenience stores, I believe, which means that they did go to stores the store members uh, like workers they don't remember seeing dior but then once again if they did have to stash a body as well as go to the stores for the receipts to get the receipts this is like only 15 minutes or something like that to hide the body which is not enough time so i don't now necessarily believe that they had enough time to stash the body uh, at Leodor, but they shortly arrived back, okay, and now the most crucial point in the whole case, in my personal opinion, is the fact that, um, the fact that Isaac Rainwand said that he did see Dior at the campground at around 1 to 1.30 p.m. in the evening, so if he didn't, if like, let's say the parents returned from Leodor and no one really saw Dior after that, I would think this is a major red flag. But Isaac said he, that Dior came back from Leodor. So it's really up to everyone now individually think that is Isaac lying here or more so is he confused and scared? And he's not willing to really express what he thinks he saw. You know what I mean? What What do you think, man? Like, uh, I, I ha like I'm. S it's so like I can't really even figure out what happened here because, um, 
I really just would, I guess, would like to talk to Isaac and really try to get his take because the only interviews on YouTube that you can find him, he's like being very like, uh, very a lawyer about everything. He's like, to the best of my knowledge, I've seen him, to the best of my knowledge, this and that, I don't have any comments about this and that, you know what I mean? He doesn't really tell you like what he thinks personally he just says what his lawyer told him to tell the press you know yeah that's weird that's like uh yeah why is he being it's like he's going out and by the way this is like one of those games people play right when they're trying to not not tell you something incriminating whether it's self-incriminating or about someone else they'll try to like not lie to you yeah. so they'll think they're out they're outsmarting you by not telling you a lie so just because he saw, did he say he saw Dior alive? You know what I mean? That's one thing. Is he even sure he really saw Dior? Or how hard would it have been to say, oh, shh, 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 Dior's sleeping, Dior's sleeping. We're just going to move him from the car into Bob's trailer just really quick so we can go lay down in the bed. Yeah. And you know what? You know, could you could you go warm up the um, the food right now, you know, by the campfire? You know what I mean? That kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that, that's I, I don't, I don't know how hard or easy it is to simulate Dior's presence yeah, to Isaac. Say. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah we don't know. We don't know, what, especially someone, if, I don't know if he has kids or not, so he might not be that, like, at first, yeah. with, like, kind of the the, the, the knocks and beats and timing. The timing of, like, a, a kid. Yeah. Like, I, want... I mean, he knew, he knew about the nap, but you know what I mean? Like, that maybe that nap time was explicitly yeah. spelled out to him also to, like, provide a cover i want to i want to add a little bit of background on isaac he has a criminal charge from i believe 2005 or 2006 i think it's some sort of a battery charge against his ex-wife i think maybe sexual assault i don't quote me on this because i don't have the details i just know that 2005 criminal charge apparently there was speculation that it was like a child molestation criminal charge it's nothing like that it's um just a criminal charge from like 10 years prior i think some sort of a domestic dispute type of a charge you know okay yeah so maybe nothing that involves no harming harming young people could nah. be just you know he said she said you know d yeah. domestic squabble yeah all right. all right that makes sense yeah um oh yeah mm -hmm. yes please i yeah. shouldn't think there's anything else i mean it it, 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 it I will say in terms of like, just looking at the case, what really troubles me is you get like a little bit, uh, I mean, allegedly, right? You could you could have some potential like Casey Anthony stuff going on. You could have some, some weird like, you know, Dingo took my baby kind of stuff going on. It's like a weird mixture of stuff, but it, it's, it's troubling because it doesn't, there's not a lot of like positive signs from the, the victims that say, in this case that they are the victims though there's a missing child and no real physical sign of him i do have to wonder let's suppose this is just to do a, a little scenario here <clears throat> because this seems like i'll just clear my throat into the microphone okay. seems like the yeah. <laughs> um it seems like you know the mother has kind of a history of let's say fractured family relationships um, and, and fractured relationships in general with the fathers of her children. What if, let's say that this, this relationship's getting real stale between the two of them, and here they have a kid, and now, you know, like, a, 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 raising a toddler is very stressful in the best of times. So imagine doing it in a relationship that's falling apart. Yeah. What if that's happening? And let's say, let's say the mom does something. Let's say the mom does something either before or during this trip or yeah but whatever it is whatever it is okay i want to put a big question mark on that and i'm gonna i'm gonna kind of not do the the guessing what happened thing that i normally do percentage wise because i'm not right, up in right. there up in there i'm just gonna i'm just gonna dangle this out there let's say the dad is kind of over it he's getting bad vibes he's getting like you know what she's not doing a real good job of taking care of my kid and you know it's i'm getting getting like i don't know if i see a future with this person and i don't know i don't know how this is going to turn out this is a good person to carry on All my right. jeans 
Here we, we, we already made, made a kid now. Here we're all, we're stuck, stuck in this relationship. And then something happens. Let's suppose she did something, like you said, if, if we don't think that they collaborated together, let's suppose something happened, accident happens, and then she kind of, suppose he's sort of in denial about it even now, and suppose his family kind of wants it all to go away, and let's suppose her family kind of wants to pretend things didn't happen and doesn't even really want to think about her. That's, you know, grandpa, great grandpa slash grandpa kind of, you know, oh, Lord, I can't remember anything. Oh, who's Isaac? I don't know him. You know, that whole thing. Okay. So maybe that's what's, because when I, when I look at the, the, the good Vernal, I, I, I get this vibe off of him. I don't get the same vibe. Mm -hmm. I get a defensive vibe. But I do also get a like resigned vibe, like well that didn't work out, and and you know which you know also could be the case if the relationship is falling apart and then their kid goes missing and he's like okay that's like this is a sign that I'm not supposed to stay together with this person, so and then and then I will also add in that like you know the uh, Jessica suddenly getting married only is shocking under normal people rules for somebody who's 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 either mentally challenged or has mental challenges in terms of like behavior regulation and frankly let's just say it just like any of us might be somewhat desperate or you know like there's not enough supply to meet demand in terms of like the personal relationship department i mean i mean that like totally like just normal like we all need someone to love mm -hmm. kind of way maybe she's got to go for who, who goes for her you know what i mean she doesn't necessarily even even being a sort of attractive person in these pictures there's something about her that's off-putting and that's you know especially when it comes time to making kids with somebody and having a family and you know even sharing a household with you know maybe she's like freaking you know like beggars can't be choosers yeah. so i mean case in point case in point there's some guy makes you you know has a kid that something goes wrong it all falls apart right away she's kind of out you know in the same place she was before this so yeah yeah i, don't, I, don't know, so, I see yeah. right. so that's so so I, this is a long a little bit long way way of saying that mm -hmm. i do kind of wonder that there was like yeah that, that something did happen to um dior I, I i really am hoping it was something more like an illegal adoption procedure mm. like basically giving up the child to someone else and just sort of not i don't know mm. why they wouldn't do it through the normal but i mean by the way the normal the normal method isn't actually necessarily that great either um you know the fostered pro child program things like that we've gone into that already but that's that's my thought that's when i when i boil this all down I guess the, my, my question turned to you and sort of as we close this out is mm -hmm. what is it to you and maybe we can also open this up to the, the the listeners that made it this far in terms of comments back to us what is it about this case that makes it especially let's say galling shocking disturbing is there anything that makes it stand out versus some other the some of the other cases where there's mm -hmm. like certain people in the case that you really I mean, I, I feel like I've kind of beaten that that horse to death a little bit in this this hour and a half plus. But you know, what are what are, what are your thoughts about that in terms of like what what makes this case, I think, especially interesting to you? Uh, well, the fact that this is kind of um, almost like a game show. You know what I mean? Like four people uh, were on there, and I think some of them must know something. You know, like all of these four people that you can see on the screen. Like this is kind of a a very odd set of uh, individuals, characters, you know what I mean? An unlikely group of people. We have the mother who seems suspicious, doesn't seem emotionally attached to the case. We have uh, the father who does a good job selling the fact that he's a very, he's missing his son. And maybe that's the case. Uh, but then again, maybe he knows more what happened. We have the grandfather who's um, apparently too old to remember. But then is he really playing the fact that he's senile? Does he really know more? You know what I mean? Like what's happening there? And then we have the last guy in the crew, Isaac Rylwind, who apparently was the only person who actually even 
had the straight story and uh once again some mental disabilities as well so i don't know it just seems like a group of people that like uh, and then where's Dior? There's no sign of Dior. You know what I mean? Like, I think this is such a bizarre case overall, you know? Yeah, I mean, the missing the missing anybody case is always so strange. It's so frustrating when it seems to happen in such a small period of time. Really, we really wonder yourself, like, how could this even be possible? Like, how could, how could a human being... I mean, short of a vast conspiracy, which doesn't seem to be the case here, right? I mean, these don't look, seem like especially well-planned people in terms of their normal lives. It's hard to believe they, they've carried off some kind of brilliant criminal conspiracy, even to, to, to like give away a child, let alone kill and hide their body. And just thinking how easy it is to track down things. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? In terms of like both the physical science and even just the electronic footprint that you leave when you go someplace, you know, they can follow you by your credit card numbers and your, you know, your usage. I mean, that was, that was, the, that's always been the case, but now by your phone usage and pings on towers and all sorts of things like that, that can make it pretty easy to verify someone using your device with somewhere yeah. who was probably you, you know what I mean? It's, it's amazing to me that it isn't, harder to shoot holes in their story but maybe that's the whole point of the sheriff being fairly negative about them is that he thinks he has shot major holes in their story and he just doesn't have enough to like formally charge them in exactly so in conclusion dude um where would you lean towards uh just before you answer that i think i will lean towards that the parents know more and uh I think that way because the other accidental kidnapping or uh, accidentally wandering off, uh, kidnapping or animal attacks uh, don't really add up to me as much as um, the family changing up their stories, always like um, t tangling themselves, uh, in, like their stories not adding up. Um, the, the, the trip being really weird, a lot of weirdness, I, I would single out the two parents that they know more about this case. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that either everybody, these four people you have on the screen here, they're either all embarrassingly incompetent as parents and, and guardians of a child, which maybe maybe that's the dirty, like the, not the dirty secret, like just the embarrassing truth here is that this is a dingo stole my baby moment. And it's been facilitated by kind of just hapless incompetence of people that are probably not, <laughs> not, not seen the good days in their lives they should have and are the damaged results of it. I mean, maybe the dad is like the least damaged at this vernal is like the least damaged out of the four of them, but it's been sort of damaged by association with this whole um, event in his life. But that, it does seem like at least two of them are are anxious to get this behind them. One of them doesn't have to worry about it anymore. And one of them is such a forced gump that he just repeats the same story over and over again, you know, consistently. And everyone's like, okay, well, you know, you didn't do anything. To the point that the, the police seem to trust him so yeah just fascinating yeah well i think this is a good time to close off the show dude um i will say uh excited uh was really excited to talk about this case more in depth and i hope uh the audience members were also s interested in hearing uh what we had to say about this case did anything you want to mention before we sign out no just um you know apologies once again for not interacting more with the comments i do read them um just about every day or, or semi-daily. Um, we will be just continuing to add your suggestions to the list. It's just a heck of a time uh, this year for probably everybody, but especially for your us and I on the work front. So, you know, we, we do this as a labor of love and we hope that you love our labor. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for joining us this week. And we'll catch you on the next week's episode. And for now, just stay safe and peace out.